Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing the newest pen from Twisby, and that is this, the Twisby Swipe. I have this in the Prussian blue with a broad nib. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the packaging, show you the pen, um, and then we can do writing samples and pros and cons. Okay, so here is the pen itself. Um, it is a all basically all plastic apart from the clip uh, pen from Twisby, uh, and it is their newest model, and I think it's actually kind of cool. It comes with some cool things. So, this is how it comes packaged. New packaging, uh, which I actually love. Like, legitimately love this packaging. Uh, I think it is no frills, it is protective, it does everything it needs to do. Simple cardboard sleeve, which I actually think is nicely designed. And then, a the little plastic box with Twisby written on it. You open it up and you get a little bit of sort of information and stuff. A couple of extras and of course, uh, the pen uh, was sitting like that. Um, and you get the converter, a cartridge, as well as the spring-loaded cartridge that comes in, a uh, converter, which comes in the pen, which I will show you in just a second. So, no frill stuff from Twisby, and what makes this pen particularly interesting is something I've already just mentioned, and that is converter. This is the first pen since the Micarta from Twisby to use a converter, but it's taken it a step further. It's actually got its own converter system uh, in the spring loader one but also is standard international so can use like a regular converter and regular cartridges as i said this is the prussian blue version it also comes in a smoke which is very similar to the go uh smoke that they have here and that sort of you know translucent gray black material whereas this is like the opaque uh blue plastic um, and it's kind of blue. It's, a, it's got a green tint to it. I want to show it in comparison. This is the Prussian Blue ALR, which was a little bit more green. And when this came out, people were like, oh, that's quite green. And then you see the, um, the swipe here, and it's more blue than that. Uh, but you can see there's still a tint of green. And just to demonstrate that, I'll put it here alongside, you know, the Lamy Safari Blue. So you can see that there is a bit more green in it. I think this is closer to a Prussian Blue uh, than the ALR, as I said, which is a little bit more green. So I'm going to cover the parts and features of the pen now, starting at the top, and you get the Twisby logo there on the little red plastic disc, which we've all come to know and uh, love. Uh, the, pen, the cap, you know, sort of... Uh, tapers ever so slightly and it's got this very unique clip which uh, is very snug to the body of the pen that little lip there on the end is the only thing that makes this clip usable in any way shape or form and i'm going to come back to that it is a snap or push cap pen um then you get a little ink window there which shows that my ink is running low i've been using this pen quite a lot as I said, I really enjoy it. Then the body tapers down to a sort of a flat end with the injection molding marks and that kind of stuff. It's uh, labeled with Twisby there on uh, the end of the barrel. And uh, the barrel is actually, um, it's a pentagon kind of shape with slightly rounded corners. And you see that uh, it sort of starts just after the ink window there and goes fa those facets all the way down the body of the pen. One thing I enjoy that this pen does that <laughs> a lot of Twisbees don't do, is that the pen posts, and it is designed to post. It posts very securely, deep enough, um, making it a, a fairly long but usable pen, particularly with the, the pen's weight, uh, and yeah, but it does post, and that's a really great step for Twisby, where a lot of the Twisby pens have had, you know, issues posting, and often have to post on, like, O-rings, or, you know, the piston turning knob, that kind of thing. This one posts very, very nicely. Now, as I said, it's a push cap, and it reveals a fairly sort of stock standard section from Twisby. Um, it's round, and then uh, flares out, and then you get the little bit where it caps, and then the number four stainless steel nib. Now, as I said, this is a broad. Uh, it comes in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and 1.1 millimeter stub. Uh, and it is the same nib that comes on the Eco and the Twisby Go. Uh, it's made by Yovo. It's around a number four size, but it is a proprietary size nib uh, to Twisby, and you can see it is branded with the Twisby logo there. I've spoken a little bit about the filling system of this pen. I'm going to unscrew the barrel here, uh, and it screws down very nicely. It's got some nice threads, and this here is the uh, spring-loaded um, 
converter. Now you can get a great feel on this. You can see, it's hard, kind of a bit hard to see with the ink in there, but you've got these little, you've got a, a spring in the uh, converter. And so you just push this down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna demonstrate this with a Twisby Go, because it's the same, kind of the same system. Um, though set out a little bit differently, of course, because the Twisby Go uses the entire body of the pen. The spring would be in here on the piston, but you push it down and then the spring pulls it back up and creates that vacuum required to fill the chamber with ink. Now, this is in a converter here, which is a really great touch. Like, there's a lot of push-pull converters that, you know, like, use this system, but without the spring. But the spring allows you to, do, you know, operate it with one hand is their sort of idea. And it is a unique kind of system to Twisby, which the fact that they're doing these things is really cool. Now. As I said, there's a multiple ways you can fill this pen. Firstly, is you can use this spring-loaded converter, which is included, uh, and it has a very good capacity. It's a bigger than a regular converter. Uh, but as I showed you in the packaging, we get an ink cartridge and a converter with the pen as well. Now, this is where things get interesting. The converter is basically a regular converter. You know, you twist you know, the end and the piston runs up and down. Great. And then you get a cartridge. This comes with the pen. Now, for the sake of the exercise, so the, the cartridges are big. They're a 1.4 millimeter cartridge, as is the converter. Here it is alongside a standard Schmidt K5 converter. You can see it is a much bigger converter. They're really filling the entire system of the pen, but this pen is standard international. So the end of the section there of the converter fits into, you know, like a standard converter will fit in there as well as standard ink cartridge. Uh, but these ones from Twisby being extra large. And just for comparison sake with that as well, here is a standard international ink cartridge from Diamine versus the Twisby ink cartridge. So it is a much bigger cartridge. As I said, it holds about 1.4 millimeters, which is really great. Now, the Twisby swipe can also be eyedroppered, uh, which means filling the entire barrel of the pen with ink. So you take out any converter, no cartridge, and this is uh, airtight. And so you can fill this entire barrel with ink, um, put a little bit of silicone grease on the threads there, and then seal it down and your whole body is filled with ink, which uh, is something like Alami Safari can't do because of the holes, of course. So a really great pen from Twisby using a multitude of filling systems. For this portion of the video, I wanted to show it alongside a couple of other Twisby pens, like just to get a sense of where it fits. Now we have the VAC 700R here, which is one of the longest pens from Twisby. Then a Twisby Diamond ALR, which is the same as the Twisby Diamond 580. We also have the Twisby Go and the Twisby Eco. So we can see it is not the biggest pen from Twisby. It is longer than the Go, uh, but it is still a fairly sort of compact pen in a lot of ways. Because the Twisby Eco is probably the best known Twisby uh, pen, most familiar to people, I've included that in the size comparison here with the Lamy Safari and the Swipe. Now, you can see it is smaller than the Eco, it is slightly smaller by a couple of millimetres than the Safari, but has similar sort of shape and dimensions as the Safari. Now, uncapped, we see, once again, it's similar to the Safari, uh, being a slightly longer nib there means the section slightly further back, uh, but it is shorter there than the Eco, uh, which it shares the same nib with. Posted, just a little shorter than the uh, Lamy Safari there. As I said, similar width and size. Uh, the section is similar to both of the, the pens, uh, and the Eco there, which posts on an O-ring towards the end there, just edging it out once again. Now for the specific dimensions of the Twisby swipe. Uh, posted, or capped, sorry, it is 138 millimeters. Uncapped, it's 127. Now, in the hand, this feels okay. Uh, it's not too short. There's no sort of, uh, you know, step downs or threads or anything to get in the way. Uh, you don't feel like you're running down onto the nib. That little flare out there is good. The section is about nine millimeters. So it is a slightly slim section, but not so slim that it feels small in your hand. Uh, and then if you post it, 
the pen comes in at 164 millimeters, which uh, is a little on the long side, perhaps, uh, but it's not so long because it doesn't feel too long because there's no like huge weight issue there. The pen is light. It's uh, 16 grams, 10 in the body and six in the cap. So whether it's so when it's unposted, it's a very light, easy, balanced pen. Um, no balance push or pull back any other way. Uh, and then when it's posted, you do feel the cap on the end, but it's not so heavy because it is just a generally very light pen. Time for a writing sample now with the Twisby. Swipe. This is a broad steel nib. Um, and the ink here is, it's a Robert Oster. It is, I hope I say this right, Tainan Pen Show Kuroshio. Kuroshio. Okay. Just gonna do the writing sample and then we have a bit of a chat. The, the nib is very smooth, very, very smooth. And it's fairly wet, like it's a generous nib. It's not the wettest broad I've ever had from Twisby, um, but it is, you know, on the wet enough side. Uh, it is, as I said, it's smooth. Reverse writing is very possible. It's a stiff nib, it's not a flex nib. You're not gonna get line variation out of it. It just pushes more ink down onto the page. Quick writing. Now, that was absolutely me. I did not have the nib lined up on the page at all. Like writing through a camera screen is not always my best friend. Not sure if that was me or if it was the pen, but something I do see a bit, and we saw it up here when I wrote the name of the pen, is that there are hard starts. And now this is not common. I have not found this from Twisby. Generally speaking, their nibs are reliable and write well and write smooth. This hard start issue is not indicative of the brand, but I can only show the pen I have in my hand. Now I did purchase this pen, so, there's nothing, you know, sort of any way of that, but I'm not used to seeing hard starts from Twisby. So I hope that is just this pen and not something we're going to see in the future a bit more. Um, the pen writes really well when it's writing. It's smooth, it's wet enough, lays down a nice line. Just occasional hard starts. And that's something, so that's something that I find with this pen occasionally. So let's talk price. In Australia, this pen retails for $39.55. Uh, in the UK, for about £19.25. Uh, and in the US, $26.99. These are prices I found at sort of standard retailers. Now, for the sake of comparison, the Go comes in at $18.99 American. Uh, and the Eco is a few dollars more than the Swipe. So it is on the entry level, the budget end of um, this you know, pen company, and that's great. I'm glad that they are introducing pens at this end and not at the top end uh, of their market. Uh, I think it's a well-priced pen for what you get. You get a, generally speaking, you get a good nib, uh, you get a really interesting filling system, and those big ink cartridges are awesome. One thing I wanted to show you very quickly uh, was this. They also do these, which is the new ink cartridges, uh, where you buy a pack of these ink cartridges, where you get 10, and they're, they're huge. That's a lot of ink, and they're pretty reasonably priced, um, and they come in a couple of different colours. So this, you know, new ink cartridges from Twisby, which, what pens these will fit? Like, we know they fit the swipe here. 
but what other pens these will fit, who knows? They would not be introducing a line of ink cartridges and a whole new range of self-made converters just for this pen. So I think we can look forward to more cartridge converter pens from Twisby that take this size of cartridge. These will fit in other pens because it is a standard, you know, you know, uh, standard international um, like nipple on the end there. But you're going to have to find a pen that takes the width of that. Like as I said, it is a big, a big cartridge, and while the opening is the same as standard international, like the neck and shoulders of that are huge. So that's something you're gonna to have to take into consideration. Um, so there may be pens out there on the market. I haven't tried them in any others. Um, we will have to wait and see. But I think this is a well-priced pen. Ink cartridges are good, converters are good. Spring-loaded converter is a great idea, I'm sure. Like they're not the first to do this, we know that. Uh, but I'm sure there will be you know more and more who do. So what are the pros and cons of the Twisby swipe? Well, I have a couple of cons. Like that that new hard starting aside, like I'm just hoping that's this pen. Not indicative of, you know, other pens from Twisby. The two issues I have firstly is the clip. Now, while this works as somewhat as a roll stop and all that kind of stuff, it's got a faceted pen, so you don't need necessarily the roll stop. And yes, that the line of that on the front, it's cool. It's a unique looking clip. I like that. But it is really quite stiff. And, you know, putting that over, um, you know, a shirt pocket maybe, but elastics and things in a pen case, it's kind of useless. Um, it's just not going to have that. And I've, I fear I would break it, to be honest. Um, you know, it's just in little grooves and things there. So you could probably pop it off you know, and just not have a clip, and in a way that might be better. Uh, the other issue I have is that the plastic feels plasticky, and I have the same issue like with the Go, um, but I don't have that feeling like with a Lamy Safari. Uh, there's a robustness to those, whereas with this I don't feel that in the same way. It's thinner, it's um, got a bit of give to it. There are a lot of pros for this pen. Firstly, I think um, it bridges a gap for um, affordable fountain pens for the adult beginner or the adult who like doesn't want to be spending a bunch on a fountain pen but wants something reliable. If you think of things like the Kakuno and a few other sort of lower end, even the Twisby Go, you they, they've got a design in mind, like a, a, an A trip kind of in mind. This is a little bit more professional. Like it's not super, super, you know, it's not like a Mont Blanc 149 or something, but it is, it's got enough sort of, adultness about it to be professional to be able to be used in that situation without too much of an issue um and i think because of that it makes it a great uh pen for new users it also because of the multiple filling systems and the versatility of those filling systems it means that if they want to start with cartridges they can if they want to progress to a converter either the spring version or you know the regular uh, twist converter or they want to eye drop of the pen, they can. It's all here. It's all given to them on day one, which is brilliant. Um, I think it's lightweight, but it's still a good size. It doesn't feel small in the hand at all. Uh, it's just got a it's got a nice size to it uh, without feeling big. Um, generally speaking, Twisby nibs are really good, and when this one's writing, it's very smooth and wet. Uh, so it's always a you know a pro. And then, of course, the price point. It's an affordable, generally speaking, it is an affordable pen. And in the world of fountain pens, $26.99 US dollars is considered an affordable fountain pen. Yes, there are cheaper, good, very good pens that cost less. But I think this is an okay option. And at this price point, I think it's a very good pen. So this was the Twisby Swipe. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. Uh, if you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for a review, I would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching this video. I know it was a long review, but I want, had there's quite a lot to cover with this pen. So thank you for watching. Enjoy your pens. Enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.